Did F.A. Hayek hold the secret to economic development? Economist William Easterly did his best to find out for a Cato Policy Forum held March 18, 2008. You can watch the full event at Cato.org. Here is Hayek's secret. There never has been a secret to development. There is not now a secret to development. There never will be a secret to development. Uh, the secret to development, which takes a lot of intellectual courage to discover this secret, the secret to development is that there is no secret. Hayek put it in a much more eloquent way, so I'm going to... Uh, uh, this Hayek explained that the the the, re, the fact that there is no secret is itself the strongest argument possible for individual liberty. And here's Hayek's secret. He said, if there were omniscient men, he said this way back in 1960. If if only people had listened to him, rather than dismissing him as a as a crank for for many years. You know, I was, uh, when I got my PhD in, in the early 80s in Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, you know, you could not, as an economist, you could not admit openly to admiring Friedrich Hayek in Cambridge, Massachusetts. That would be, you know, that would be a, a huge source of scandal and shame. You know, I would, uh, you know, if I admitted to, in that time, uh, admiring Friedrich Hayek, I would have had to have sort of like one of those standard scandal news conferences, you know, where my my glum-looking wife would be standing by my side, <laughs> and I would say, you know, I'm I'm sorry, I've I betrayed the, my sacred trust to the economics profession and my family, and I want to begin the healing process. I've you know been in love with the ideas of Friedrich Hayek and. <laughs> I uh, just wanted to get that out in the open now. Um, so here's, here's Hayek's secret. If, if there were omniscient men, if we could know not only all our present wishes, but all, also all our future wants and desires, there would be little case for liberty. And in turn, liberty of the individual would make complete foresight impossible. It's liberty that has made for all this tremendous unpredictability that I was talking about earlier. It's the fact that free individuals, you cannot predict what they will do next. Liberty is essential to leave room for the unforeseeable and unpredictable. We want it because we have learned to expect from it the opportunity of realizing many of our aims. It is because every individual knows so little and because we rarely know which, which of us knows best that we trust the independent and competitive efforts of many to induce the emergence of what we shall want when we see it. That is, in one sentence, the, the secret to economic development. Uh, liberty to make possible the unforeseeable, unpredictable, through the independent and competitive efforts of many, so that we have the completely spontaneous emergence of what sh we shall definitely, definitely want when we see it. And so here we see the emergence of what we want from freedom. The more of, this is a measure of economic freedom. The more economic freedom there is, uh, the, the more people get, the richer they are, and the more they get in the way of material possessions, in the way of, you know, computers and iPods and cars and all those things I, that I showed you before. Uh, here's a measure of political freedom. Political freedom measured on the horizontal axis. And again, uh, per capita affluence measured on the vertical axis. So here's the emergence of what we want from political freedom. Now, let me caution you right away about what conclusion not to draw from this graph. Here is, if you, if, you th if you think that this is the answer, then you still have not quite gotten Hayek's point. 
If you think that the answer was, well, oh, we know the answer, just immediately implement democratic capitalism and poor societies will become rich. That's not the answer. That's still not the answer. Because no one, there's no one in a position to implement democratic capitalism. You, there's no one who can be put in charge to implement de democratic capitalism. That's a contradiction in terms. And here Hayek explains the process some more. So here's, you know, the fruit of all my late night reading of Hayek is all these quotes I pasted in here. You know, this is kind of a standard lazy way to give a speech. It's rather than come up with your own material, you just quote someone else uh, who, who understands things better than you do. So here's another great quote from Hayek. Uh, the interaction of individuals possessing different views is what constitutes the life of thought. The growth of reason is based on the existence of such differences. Its results cannot be predicted. Here again, he's harping on this stuff that cannot be predicted, but we've seen that's a, that's a great thing to harp on because if there's anything else about growth and development, it's that it's completely unpredictable. That we cannot know which views will assist this growth and which will not. To plan or organize progress is a contradiction in terms. I wish that could be put on the, on the, the wall of the World Bank, <laughs> where right beneath the slogan where they say, our dream is a world f free of poverty, you know. Well, they have no clue how to, how to achieve that, so I'd like to put it beneath it. To plan or organize progress is a contradiction in terms. Take that, Millennium Development Goals, pow. <laughs> uh, individualism. Individual liberty. Individual liberty is an attitude of humility before this social process, this spontaneous social process, and of tolerance to other opinions, and is the exact opposite of that intellectual hubris which demands comprehensive direction of the social process. This is exactly where development has gone wrong for 50 years, is that we demand comprehensive direction of the social process. And that demand leads to undevelopment, it leads to lack of development, it leads to underdevelopment. Hayek's insight was giving up on that demand for direction of the social process is what leads to liberty and development. So how do you create the conditions for individual freedom? How do you, uh, so, it, you know, individual freedom seems to be you know, the, the big thing going on here. So how do you create the conditions for individual freedom? That's, you know, there's sort of an infinite regress here. You say individual freedom is what matters, but then how do you create individual freedom? So the conventional answer, which again, completely fails to understand uh, Hayek's insight, is the conventional answer is get, to, get together a bunch of experts on institutions, assemble all the world's leading experts on institutions for, that promote economic freedom, and have them design the right institutions for economic freedom, and then uh, have those implemented by tomorrow. That's the conventional answer. Here's Hayek's answer. The value of freedom consists mainly in the opportunity for the growth of the undesigned. And the, re and the beneficial functioning of a free society rests largely on the existence of such freely grown institutions. So, Hayek is saying, no, you still don't get it. You can't put the experts in charge of designing the institutions that promote freedom if the institutions themselves emerge from freedom. It's the institutions themselves emerge spontaneously from free individuals. That's the growth of the undesigned. No one's designing institutions. The beneficial func functioning of a free society rests largely on the existence of such freely grown institutions. I know I'm really stretching the, uh, the, the, stretching the, the paradox here to the utmost. There has certainly been no successful attempt to operate a free society without a genuine reverence for grown institutions. So the opposite of freedom is you try to do top-down social engineering to try to make the right institutions. Uh, the, the meaning of freedom is that you allow out of free individuals, institutions to grow to accommodate that freedom. William Easterly is a professor of economics at New York University and author of the books, The Elusive Quest for Growth 
and The White Man's Burden. You can watch the full event at Cato.org.